Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at series circuits. So let's get started. Now, the first thing to realize is that there are two types of circuits, namely series and parallel circuits. And in this video, we're gonna focus on series circuits only. So what is a series circuit in the first place? Well, it's one where all components are connected one after the other, and there is only one path for the current to flow. So this is the most basic type of circuit where you've only got one path. And another way to think about this is if you were to binge a TV series on Netflix, for example, and if you do that, you'll notice that all the episodes follow one after the other, a bit like all the components in a series circuit. They all go one after the other. So if you have a look at this circuit diagram here, we've got a battery, some wires, and two bulbs. And you'll notice that the current will flow from the negative terminal round in this direction through the first bulb, through the second bulb, and back up to the battery again. And so in this circuit, there's only one path for the current to flow. We're now going to look at two very important rules for current and voltage in a series circuit. So the first one is that current is the same at every point in a series circuit. So we could say that IS, the current passing through the supply, i.e. the battery, is equal to I1, which is equal to I2, and so on. And just to help you visualize this, I'm going to show you a simulation. So let's say I had a basic circuit here with a battery, some wires, a heater, and a lamp. If I then wanted to measure the current at various points in this circuit, I would use an ammeter to do that, and I would need to break the circuit to place it where I wanted to go. So let's say I took my ammeter and placed it near the battery here, and that gives me a reading of 0.6 amps in this example. But if I move it to this region over here, you'll notice I still have a reading of 0.6 amps. If I then move it down here, you'll notice the reading stays the same, and same over here, and lastly over here. So we can say that at all points in a series circuit, the current is the same, and that's our first rule. The second rule is that voltage splits up across the components in a series circuit. That is, the voltage across the supply, or the voltage of the battery, is equal to V1 plus V2 plus dot dot dot. So if we look back at the circuit diagram, what we're saying is that the voltage across these components must add up to give the supply voltage, i.e. the voltage of the battery. So the voltage across this bulb and the voltage across this bulb must add up to give the same value of the voltage across the battery. And just to show you a simulation of this, if I had the same circuit as before with a battery, a heater, and a lamp, let's say this time we wanted to measure the voltage across the battery and the heater and the lamp. So if I put the voltmeter across the battery first of all, that gives me 3 volts for the supply voltage. If I then move it across the heater, that gives me 2 volts for example, and across the lamp that gives me 1 volt. So you'll notice that the voltage across the heater, which is 2 volts, and the voltage across the lamp, which is 1 volt, adds up to give 3 volts, which was the voltage of the supply. So just a reminder of our two rules for series circuits, we have that current is the same at all points, and that the voltages across the components in a series circuit add up to give the supply voltage. And lastly, a disadvantage of using series circuits is that if there's a break in a series circuit, for example caused by a faulty bulb or wire, current can no longer flow since there is only one path. For example, the bulbs in the diagram above would go out. So if we look at the diagram again, notice how if one of these bulbs was faulty, it would essentially be like having a break in the circuit. So because we've only got one path in this circuit, the current can no longer flow in the circuit. So both bulbs would go out if one of them was to become faulty. And things like fairy lights and Christmas tree lights are typically connected in series. But this is a bit of a disadvantage because if one of the little lights go out, then they all go out. Some advantages of series circuits, however, is that the circuits themselves are usually quite easy to build compared to parallel circuits. And another advantage of series circuits is that they might sometimes be cheaper to build than parallel circuits because they might have fewer components. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.